Hi, I'm Ollie from the Android team. I want to tell you about ExoPlayer, an application-level media player for Android. Built on top of Android's low-level media APIs, ExoPlayer delivers a number of benefits over Android's built-in media player. You'll be glad to hear it supports both Dash and smooth streaming adaptive playbacks. At Google, we're already using ExoPlayer in YouTube and Play Movies, and now we're open sourcing it so that you can use it in your own app. I'm going to show you the low-level APIs on which ExoPlayer is built, outline some of the benefits of application-level media players, and show you how you can integrate ExoPlayer into your own applications. Before we take a look at ExoPlayer, let's first take a look at Android's media APIs. Prior to Jellybean, Android's high-level media player API was the de facto way for developers to add video to their applications. It's really easy to use. This example starts playing a video with just two lines of code, one to create the player and a second to start the playback. These two lines of code hide nearly all of the complexities of video playback from the developer. However, under the hood, the media player implementation is doing a lot of work in order for the video to be played. For streaming, the first thing that the player needs to do is to load the video data over the network. The data then needs to be buffered according to some policy, which specifies when more data needs to be loaded and how much. Before the video can be rendered, the individual audio and video samples need to be extracted from the container format in which they're delivered. These samples then need to be decoded. And finally, the decoded samples need to be rendered to the screen and to the speaker. At a slightly higher level, the player needs to track its overall state, such as the playback position and whether the playback is currently advancing. The Media Player API is simple and easy to use because it hides all of this complexity. However, one drawback of this approach is that more advanced developers are then unable to modify or extend the underlying behaviours to better suit their needs. For example, a developer is unable to tweak the buffering policy or to add a persistent cache for buffered media data. To better support these use cases, we added low-level media APIs to Android. From Jellybean onwards, the Media Extractor API provides networking, buffering and media extraction functionality. We also added the Media Codec API, which provides access to decoders, including hardware-accelerated video decoders. The Media Codec API supports rendering of video frames directly, and playing decoded audio can be done using the Audio Track API, which has been around since Cupcake. These low-level APIs provide developers with an alternative to Android's high-level media player. They make it possible to build application-level media players, written in Java, where the player logic is implemented in application code. This code will typically call into the provided APIs in order to load and extract the media samples, decode them, and render them. A developer may optionally choose to implement more of this functionality at the application level. For example, implementing networking, buffering, and sample extraction allows the developer to more easily customize these components. Within Google, we've developed our own application-level media player called ExoPlayer. It supports both Dash and smooth streaming adaptive playbacks, DRM-protected content, and has been designed specifically to be easy to modify and to extend. Google's YouTube and Play Movies applications are already using ExoPlayer on some of the more recent Android devices, and we're seeing some great results. For example, in Play Movies, Dash playbacks using ExoPlayer have been shown to reduce startup playback latency by 65%, are 40% less likely to rebuffer, and deliver video at 11% higher resolution on average than when using MediaPlayer. Since ExoPlayer is an application-level media player, we're able to tweak it and to add new functionality through Play Store updates. And we hope that this will allow us to further improve these numbers going forward. We're really pleased with the improvements that ExoPlayer has brought to our own applications, but we recognise that for many developers, the barrier to entry for adopting a similar approach is quite high. ExoPlayer is itself around 16,000 lines of code, and using Android's low-level media APIs can be a challenge. So creating such a player from scratch requires a considerable effort. For this reason, we've decided to open source ExoPlayer. We hope that this will lower the barrier to entry allowing third-party developers to obtain similar improvements without having to incur the cost of developing their own application-level media players from scratch. Let's take a look at how ExoPlayer is designed and how it can be used in your own application. Rather than being a single Java object, an ExoPlayer is composed from a range of modular components, 
each of which contributes a desired behaviour or piece of functionality to the player. At the top level we have the exoplayer object itself, which does little beyond maintain the overall player state. This object calls into components called track renderers, whose job it is to render the media during playback. The exoplayer library provides a track renderer for playing video, which uses the media codec API to decode the video samples and to render them onto a surface. It supports any video format for which there exists an underlying decoder. H.264 is commonly used. The exoplayer library also provides a track renderer for playing audio, which uses a media codec API to decode the audio samples and the audio track API to play them. Both the audio and video track renderer implementations need to be provided with a sample source component, from which samples can be obtained. For a developer who doesn't require control over the networking, buffering and sample extraction behaviours, the Exoplayer library provides an implementation called Framework Sample Source, which hooks into Android's Media Extractor API. By doing this, it provides support for all container formats supported by the version of Android on which it's running. Let's take a look at the corresponding code. First, we build the sample source, passing the URI where the video is located. We then build our audio and video renderers, passing the sample source. And finally, we build an instance of Exoplayer, passing the two renderers, and start the playback. This is the simplest example of how Exoplayer can be used. Let's now take a look at a more complicated use case, specifically how Exoplayer supports Dash and Smooth Streaming adaptive playbacks. For Dash and Smooth Streaming, the Exoplayer library contains components that completely replace Android's Media Extractor API. Individual instances of a component called Chunk Sample Source are used to supply audio and video samples to the renderers. Each Chunk Sample Source requires a Chunk Source component, from which chunks of media, typically between 2 and 10 seconds in duration, can be obtained. In this example, we'll focus on Dash playbacks, for which Dash MP4 Chunk Source components should be used. Finally, each chunk source requires a data source. As the name suggests, data source components are responsible for actually loading the media. In this case, we use HTTP data source, which loads data over the network. Note that for Dash playbacks, audio and video are normally streamed separately, which is why there are two HTTP data source components rather than just one. Going back to looking at code, you can see how each component is injected with the component on which it depends. The video renderer is injected with the sample source, which is injected with the chunk source, which is injected with the data source. This approach, where the player is constructed from modular components using dependency injection, makes it easy for an application developer to replace any or all of these components with their own custom implementations. What I've shown so far is a slightly simplified object model, and in a full example, a few more components are required. Firstly, something called a load control is required to manage the buffering of the media chunks. Secondly, and most importantly for adaptive playbacks, each chunk source requires something called a format evaluator. Format evaluators select from the available formats before each chunk of media is requested. Here, we're using a fixed implementation for audio, which will stick to a single format. For video, we're using an adaptive implementation, which will select a format suitable for the current network conditions, aiming to provide the user with the highest quality possible without causing any buffering. We now know how to build an Exoplayer for adaptive playbacks, using the standard components provided by the Exoplayer library. I also touched on how easy it is for an application developer to customise such a player to better suit their particular use case. Let's now take a look at some examples. Suppose that a developer wants to add a persistent cache for buffered media data, so that if the user watches the same video twice, the second time around it will be played from the cache. In the Exoplayer model, this is easy. The developer can simply insert cache data source components when building the player. A cache data source component is provided by the Exoplayer library, but equally, a developer is free to write their own implementation from scratch. Similarly, a developer may choose to replace the default load control implementation in order to achieve different buffering behavior, or implement an entirely custom track renderer for example, to render an overlay on top of the video. Of most use for adaptive playbacks is the ability to inject custom format evaluators. This allows the developer to experiment with their own adaptive algorithms. 
There are many other ways in which ExoPlayer can be extended and customised, and we're looking forward to seeing what developers can do with it. In summary, we've seen how Android's low-level media APIs allow the development of powerful application-level media players, which can be more easily updated, modified and extended by developers than is possible with Android's standard media player. Google is using ExoPlayer to deliver some great benefits for our own applications, and we hope that by open sourcing ExoPlayer, we will allow other developers to achieve similar results. So, if you're curious and want to learn more, then visit the developer guide. You're going to find a ton of useful information, as well as some great examples to help get you started.